We'll talk more about the temperatures for the next few hours coming up. News 18 at 6 starts now. WLFI Lafayette. News from where you live. Good evening, I'm Gina Quattrochi. And I'm Jeff Smith. Thanks for joining us. And so nearly $26,000, that's how much a Lafayette woman allegedly collected in benefits after she failed to report the death of her husband. We first reported on Isla Solomon in May after police found her husband's body inside their home. News 18's Brittany Tyner is live at the home on Shawnee Avenue. She joins us now with more on the charges. Brittany. Jeff, Gina, it was here where police found a tarp covered with bed sheets, covered with lime powder. Under the covers, they found the body of Isla Solomon's husband, Gerald Scooter Gavin. In early May, police got a call from the son of a concerned friend who hadn't seen Gavin since late summer or early fall of 2013. When officers went to his house for a well being check, they spoke to Isla Solomon, who told them Gavin was her husband. She said he was at the Kentucky Derby with her sister and brother in law, but had no way to contact them. That's when police went into the house and found the body. According to court documents, the body was in an advanced stage of decay. An autopsy showed no evidence of trauma, and the cause and manner of death were undetermined. A forensic entomologist ruled that the death actually occurred in mid to late June of 2013, but not after July 15th. Prosecutors say Solomon was collecting Gavin's benefits from the Department of Veterans Affairs, Social Security, and the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation. Since July 15 of 2013, he, she collected nearly $26,000 from those three agencies. A neighbor says he and other neighbors have been waiting months to see action taken against Solomon. And it was like, I don't know, five months after we moved in or something like that it happened. So it was just a new neighborhood, and then this happened. I mean, it's a beautiful neighborhood. We love living here. We have had no problems other than that. Solomon faces three counts of welfare fraud and three counts of theft. She also faces three misdemeanor charges, including failure to report a dead body and unlawful disposition of a dead human body. Solomon was arrested last night and booked into the Tippecanoe County Jail. She remains there on a $5,000 surety bond. In June, with an interview with News 18, Solomon said she was prepared to pay back Social Security and any pensions if ordered. Reporting live in Lafayette, Brittany Tyner, News 18. Well, Purdue police are warning students to be extra cautious this weekend as they head into fall break. Police expect campus to be more vacant and are reminding students to use the emergency call boxes if they need to. News 18's Elizabeth Rentschler joins us live from campus with more on what the boxes are and how often they're used. Elizabeth. Hundreds of emergency boxes like this one are scattered throughout campus, and they're very easy for students to use. All they have to do is press this red button, and they'll be immediately dispatched to a dispatch center with Purdue Police. Purdue police say this weekend they especially want students to be familiar with these boxes as we head into fall break weekend. Hundreds of emergency boxes like this can be found scattered across Purdue's campus. It's just another tool school officials say helps keep students safe. It's a great system. It's a, a great need for our campus. Purdue Police Captain Eric Chen says the boxes have been a part of Purdue's campus for nearly 25 years. Last year, Chen says the call boxes were used 169 times for a variety of reasons. We've had uh, calls varying from being lost on campus uh, to actual crimes in progress where they do need police assistance. The call boxes work like a telephone. All a student has to do is press the call button and they're immediately connected to a Purdue police dispatcher. From there, Chin says police can be on the scene in a matter of minutes. We prioritize her call. So if there's an emergency call in process in progress currently, um, you know the response time may differ. But overall, our, our non-emergency response times for our police department is just under four minutes. Chin says the boxes are strategically placed throughout campus based on environmental needs. Right now, 300 call boxes sit on school property. But Chin says as the student population continues to grow, 
more boxes will likely be added. The more boxes they add, Chin says, the safer campus will be. A lot of people are depending on their cell phones. As we know that there's limitations to those cell phones. You know, there's going to be times when, when the towers are busy and you can't get that, that phone call through. So it's, it's, it's a really good way of having these available for someone to contact the police department when you need to do so. Now, each one of these boxes can cost about $5,000, but Eric Chen says it's money well spent to help keep students safe. Reporting live from Purdue's campus, Elizabeth Rentschler, News.